guys, welcome back to the channel and to my Horizon Zero Dawn Master Machine Hunting series. We're less than two weeks away from Horizon Forbidden West, and I've got just a few more Zero Dawn machines to round out the series. In this video, we're tackling Rock Breakers, one of the rarest and also one of the most difficult machines in the game. Rock Breakers are tough even for seasoned Horizon players. So whether you're replaying Zero Dawn to get hyped for the sequel like me, or you're brand new to Horizon and just trying to figure out how to take down these crazy machines, get ready to become a Rock Breaker Hunting Master. With their subterranean tunneling capabilities, Rock Breakers are a very unique machine that you rarely run into. In fact, you have more opportunities to encounter a Rock Breaker through quests than you do through exploring the world. There's only a single Rock Breaker site on the entire map, so one of the reasons they're so tough is because you simply don't have many opportunities to learn how to fight them. That's not to say they become super easy with practice though. Rock Breakers have some very strong attacks that are difficult to avoid, and at 3500 HP, they're also one of the tankiest machines in the game. On top of that, the single Rock Breaker site that is on the map always spawns a pair of Rock Breakers, so if you go here to fight them, you have to deal with two at a time. Because of all this, many people simply avoid Rock Breakers, at least until they have endgame weapons and really good weapon coils. However, with a few key weapons and a clever strategy, we can take on Rock Breakers relatively early in the game, as soon as you get to Meridian in fact. So let's see how that's done. First off, we need to figure out a way to make two Rock Breakers more manageable. Similar to my Stalker video, we're going to accomplish this with the help of a Rope Caster, specifically the Purple Shadow Rope Caster, which you can pick up as soon as you reach Meridian. Something many players don't realize is that once you tie down a machine with a Rope Caster, it will stay immobilized for 90 seconds. The catch is you can't damage it during this time. Any significant amount of damage will cause the tie down effect to run out and free the machine. That's okay though, because the best way to use a Rope Caster is to immobilize one machine for a little while so you can deal with another. That's exactly what we're going to do with the Rock Breakers. As soon as one of them fully emerges from the ground, we're going to tie it down. Now this usually takes four or five ropes, but don't let up until you see the tie down icon change to show you the white circle timer. Now that we have one tied down, we can turn our attention to the other. But instead of dealing damage, we want to get that one tied down as well. Now that we have them both immobilized, we're going to focus on the first one, and we need a way to deal a lot of damage to it. Our goal is to take this one out before the other one breaks free of its ropes. That way we only ever have to deal with one at a time. Taking a look at the machine catalog, we can see that Rock Breakers have a weakness to freeze. That's great, because arrows have a huge damage multiplier on frozen machines, and the fact that Rock Breakers are weak to it means we can freeze them pretty easily. We can also see that the exhaust port is particularly vulnerable, meaning it has a damage multiplier on it as well. So, we want to freeze the Rock Breaker and then focus on dealing damage to its exhaust port. To freeze it, your best tool in the early to mid game is a sling and freeze bombs. It takes two to four freeze bombs to get the Rock Breaker frozen. As for dealing damage, the sharp shot bow and precision arrows are the tool of choice. Now as soon as you deal damage to the rock breaker, it's going to break free from its ropes, but that's okay. Keep your cool and use concentration and hunter reflexes to land as many shots as possible on the exhaust port before it dives underground. As soon as it does dive underground, you need to move around and keep track of where the rock breaker is. The best way to do this is to turn the camera around so you're looking backwards. You can usually tell when it's about to emerge again because you'll see this flashing red and yellow alert symbol. Keep an eye out for that, and as soon as you see it, dodge to the side to avoid getting damaged. Keep avoiding the Rock Breaker's attacks until it emerges completely again. When it does, start hitting that exhaust port right away. If it becomes unfrozen, freeze it again with your sling. Before you know it, you'll have the Rock Breaker down, and you'll be able to repeat this strategy with a second. So let's take a quick look at gear, and then we'll get into the live combat. Let's first take a look at my outfit. I'm going to use the Nora Protector Medium. This is a great, relatively inexpensive early to mid game all arounder because of its high melee damage resistance. Most of the Rock Breaker's attacks are melee based, so this will be great for us. I've put a mid tier blue melee resist weave on it to boost that stat even further. As for weapons, our key one is going to be the Shadow Rope Caster. You'll need this version of the Rope Caster for large machines like Rock Breakers. I've put a few basic handling mods on mine so we can shoot it just a little bit faster, but you should load yours up with as much handling as you can. Next, we have the sling giving us access to freeze bombs. I'll be using the blue version, but you can use the green one if you'd like. The freeze bombs are just as effective. However, I recommend the blue one because it's still pretty cheap, and you gain a second mod slot and access to shock bombs as well. On my sling, I have a couple of basic freeze mods to boost the freeze effect a bit. Finally, we have the shadow sharp shot bow, which gives us access to those precision arrows we need for dealing damage. Now this strategy can work with the Karja or even the basic sharp shot bows, but you'll struggle to deal damage fast enough with those because they have fewer mod slots that you can use to load up on handling and damage. I would highly recommend investing in the shadow version as soon as you can. You'll use it for more than just rock breakers. On mine I've put a mid tier blue handling mod and a couple of damage mods as well. 
Overall, I think this weapon loadout is pretty reasonable for someone to get by the time they run into rock breakers for the first time. As for skills, the only ones we'll need are Hunter Reflexes and Concentration, both of which give us a slow-mo effect that will make it easier to aim at the exhaust port on the Rock Breakers. In the future, you'll want to unlock Double and Triple Shot and also Dodge Prowess, which will make it easier for you to deal damage and dodge the Rock Breakers attacks. But for now, all we need is Hunter Reflexes and Concentration. Alright, let's take a look at the live combat. Alright guys, so I'm here at the Rock Breaker site, the only one on the map. And I'll show you real quick, my difficulty level is very hard, just like every video in the series. And the only thing I'm going to do here before we run in is I'll switch over to my healing potions. It's always a good idea to do that before any big fight. And for the rock breakers, um, we might need that because we're going to bait them out of the ground to rope them. And while we're running around to, to bait them out, there's just a good chance that we'll get hit by like the one we're not paying attention to or something. So good idea to have the potions out or at the ready. And... Uh, we're just going to run around here and try and bait them out. They're going to notice us right away. This guy came out for us, so we'll rope him. There, we got the other one out, so we're going to rope him right away. As well. So now that they're both roped down, they'll stay like that as long as we don't do any damage. So I'm going to freeze this first one. Take two freeze bombs to do that. And then I'll scan him so we can see his exhaust port here on the back. And we'll use our precision arrows to start dealing damage to that. Now he's unroped since we started dealing damage. Um, so he'll dive back in here in a second. But while he's out, we basically want to just use jump and hunter reflexes like this. Or you could use concentration too, like this. To do as much damage as we can to the exhaust port. So there he goes down. We can craft a few arrows while we're waiting. And... You want to dodge when he's trying to come up so we can hit him here a couple times while he's trying to do that attack and you can see most of his health is already gone he's still frozen now he's not frozen but we don't really need him to be we can just hit him a few times in the exhaust port here i'll use concentration to finish him off so now we're down one and i believe the other one just got free so we can, we can try to freeze him while he's out still, but he's probably going to dive down here in a second. Yeah, there he goes. So he's frozen for us, though, when he comes out. Hit him with a couple arrows here while he does this. Notice I'm not fully drawing my bow. Um, you don't need to fully draw your bow to get full damage. That just increases the accuracy, but we don't really need perfect accuracy on this big target. And you can hit this exhaust port anywhere on here, so you don't have to hit it on the glowing part, you can hit it. I'll try and show you when he comes back out. You can hit it on the top, anywhere basically that glows when you scan it. You can even hit him once while he does that, and actually he's unfrozen now, so we're going to want to switch back to freezing him as soon as he comes out. Don't need to rope this second one since we've got the first one taken care of. And I'm, I'm timing my dodges by looking for that... Um, red and yellow flashing alert icon. I'll try and point it out here if he does it. Oh, he didn't do it that time. Did it while he was out there. You could see it. Take a healing potion. So he's out, so we'll take a couple freeze bombs, freeze him again. And I'll show you, you can hit this from any angle, even on the top. And it'll deal a bunch of damage. If you like concentration, you can use that. And you can also just hit him anywhere in the body for, like, a whole bunch of damage, too. So we got them both taken care of there. So as you guys can see, this strategy is really effective against the Rock Breakers. The key is using that Rope Caster to immobilize one while you deal with the other. You also have to keep your cool after releasing the first one from its ropes. Remember to keep an eye on it while it's underground and watch for that alert symbol so you can time your dodge. Also make sure you remember to refreeze it if the freeze effect wears off at any point. If you keep these things in mind, you'll be surprised how fast you can take down rock breakers. Now I do have some extra tips for you guys. First off, as you get better weapons and mods, you'll want to transition to using freeze arrows and hard point arrows instead of freeze bombs and precision arrows to conserve resources. That being said, you'll always be able to loot two purple mods from rock breakers, so you might be able to make that transition faster than you think. The next tip is that you can experiment with using shock bombs or shock arrows to put the rock breakers into a shocked state. You can use this in a similar way to the rope caster to immobilize them, but just be warned that the shock state doesn't last anywhere near as long as the tie down effect. That being said, if you're having trouble tying the rock breakers down, 
shocking them first makes it really easy to use the rope caster on them. Also, you'll see a lot of people suggesting to use tear blast arrows to blast off the rock breaker's four claws. That's because if you can tear all four of them off, the rock breaker won't be able to burrow underground anymore. This isn't bad advice, but it's not my preferred strategy for a couple of reasons. First off, it takes a while to knock off all four claws from both rock breakers, and it's especially hard to line up shots on the back claws. During all the time you spend trying to tear off the claws, the rock breakers are probably going to deal a lot of damage to you. Also, even though this prevents them from burrowing, it doesn't immobilize them, so they'll still come after you while they're above ground. Another strategy you'll often see is focusing on exploding the fuel sacks on the rock breaker's belly. Again, this isn't bad advice, but it just takes so long to do this and it doesn't deal a huge amount of damage once you get it done. Now you could do this while the rock breaker is frozen to deal some extra damage, but the fire explosion will remove the freeze effect, so I don't think it's worth it. Focusing on the exhaust port will let you deal much more damage much more quickly. Finally, I don't think most people realize that the rock formations around the rock breaker site are climbable. If you can get up on one of these, it can be a relatively safe place to attack the rock breakers from. However, they can still damage you with their ranged attack from here, and they can even knock you off. It might sound a little counterintuitive, but I think you're actually better off on the ground against the rock breakers. Alright guys, that's my master machine hunting guide for rock breakers. Rock breakers are a really unique machine and also really tough, so I hope this video helped you out. For all the Horizon pros out there, I'd be interested in hearing your favorite ways to deal with rock breakers, so go ahead and leave me a comment about that down below. If you enjoyed this video, or if you learned something, hitting that like button is always appreciated and helps me out. We have just a few Zero Dawn machines left to cover before Forbidden West comes out in just a few weeks, and I'm super excited to start making a bunch of content for that. I'll definitely be doing machine hunting guides like this, but I also want to branch out and do other types of tips and tricks type content as well. So make sure you're subscribed for that. Maybe even leave a comment to let me know what types of videos you'd like to see. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.